Well, Kyle Weatherman has the best starting position of anybody picking up his first Anselm Menard's pole position here this week, and he's won every practice session, so he has the best view right up front. He's with a new team this year, renowned sense of confidence, so I believe this young man can very well have a good chance picking up a career win number one today. Yeah. It was only a few years ago, too, that a young 15-year-old kid, Kyle Weatherman, showed up at Salem Speedway, qualified fourth. Had very no idea who he was. <laughs> yeah, no idea who the, the youngster was at the time, running an Andy Hillenberg car. Goes out, finishes fourth in his first race, and then really set the world on fire. Two runner-up finishes at the Fall Classic at Salem and then at Iowa Speedway. He's been knocking on that door. Can he seal the deal tonight? That's the big question. Michael Lear caught up on that outside. That's going to allow Clay Greenfield to get side by side, looking to the inside. Josh Williams as well, trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack and contend for that runner-up spot. And that's not a surprise either. We talked about Kyle Weatherman in the beginning of this broadcast, how he won the pole. That car's been very quick. Well, Tom Hesser has been very solid as well all weekend. He was second in the first practice inside the top five. He's trying to look to the inside for that third position, Charlie. Tom Hesser, the man on the move early on. You know that Tommy Hesser has a very good race car. When he qualifies inside the top ten, he'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not a good qualifier. He's two of his five wins. He started 16th and 17th at Salem and went to victory lane. I've never seen this racetrack until they tested here about a week ago, and he said he fell in love with the place. Really likes how you can run two grooves as we see him about a groove up off that yellow line and then diamond it down in the corner. But right now, Kyle Weatherman, living large and in charge and extending that lead. But Josh Williams, you mentioned, it's hard to believe that was his first short track top five finish. As long as Josh has been dabbling in the ARCA Racing Series, and as long as he's been around, that third place finish was his first top five. So that's given him confidence. And I flat out asked Josh, I said, what happens if you go to Talladega, which is supposed to be his last scheduled start, and you're leading the points after you leave there? He said, if we don't have money in the bank, we're not going to go to Toledo Speedway. Car up against the wall on turn three and four. It is the 81 car of Kevin Campbell. He had that problem. It started, started Charlie in turn two, as we see. Got up out of the groove and hit the wall there, and that tire let go, and he rode the wall up all the way into turn three and four. Unfortunate circumstances for that young driver making his ARCA Racing Series debut. Yeah, Lira really struggled on that outside line to time that restart. His loss was Tommy Hessert's gain there. Hessert now in the second position. Now trying to look to the inside of his Cunningham Motorsports teammate, Kyle Weatherman, for the lead. Austin Wayne Sale able to clear Sarah Cornette Ching, but that really helped our point leader, Grant Enfinger, now in the second position. Restarted in fourth, looking for that lead. Started at the rear of the field, Charlie. Now looking for the lead on lap 78. Finger wasted no time on that restart, timed it perfectly, was able to get around the two of Sarah Cornette Ching and go to the outside. He's one of the few guys I've seen that's been able to work his car to the outside and make several passes. That 23 car right now is on a rail. And this is what I've wanted to see. We know how good that 22 Cunningham Motorsports entry is out front in clean air. Kyle Weatherman started a little bit further back on this restart. Now starting to work his way back through the field. Let's not forget, Grant Enfinger made a swap last year midseason, running for Howard Bixman, decided to make a change, and went over to GMS Racing in the midst of the championship battle. Won two races there. I really think his experience has helped take this team to the next level. Brandon Jones being very patient now, now looking to the inside as Austin decides to go quite a bit higher as he gets sideways there, and that's going to allow Brandon Jones to get that nose the number 25 Ansel Menard's Toyota out in front. The thing I've been really impressed with here in Mobile watching his strategy, he'll just linger back about fifth or sixth place right now running in fourth until 50 to go. That's when he really made his move at Mobile was with 50 to go, and then he found himself, of course, battling for that win. I, it's looking like he's running the same race tonight, was outside the top five for the first 100 laps, now back inside the top five as we approach the end of this one. Let's not forget, that's a family-owned race team doing it on a very tight budget. Josh, after the first practice, after I had a chance to talk with him, he was underneath the hood, wrenching on the race car himself, does a lot of the work on these race cars, and it wasn't that long ago he took a start and park race car with the Rulo brothers, qualified inside the top ten, and finished sixth. A very conservative, probably the most conservative sixth place run I've ever seen. Now Tiff's going to have to make short work of Josh Williams here. Gets the nose out in front, and he has to keep now Grant Enfinger in his sights about four or five car lengths ahead. 
Could this be the night Matt Tiff finally closes the deal? This is truly remarkable. It took him 45 races, Charlie, to pick up career win number one. Tonight sets history and wins number 10 here. The, the toll that he has put on the ARCA Racing Series, he has taken it by storm, solidifying his dominance in the series. 